Road Show, episode number 487. My name is John Morgan, and Cole Coffee is with me. And right off the top, I'll just offer some apologies for being a little bit late, a little bit later than I was supposed to, but it sounds like a little bit late is uh, just kind of your day so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, they don't know it's late. No, no, it's, 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 I, was, I'm, I was supposed to be here earlier. It's supposed still going to get early. delivered on time for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all the listeners who will be here. But I know that we had a schedule and <laughs> I was running behind and I was not able to make it on time. Uh, busy morning, actually. I, I got uh, I got a chance to fill in and uh, host USC Unfiltered with uh, Matt Sarah, which is always fun. Uh, yeah. It was great. We had Manel Kopp and uh, Gregory Rodriguez on as guests. And, uh, I mean, honestly, like, when you're working with Matt Serra, you really don't have to do anything. Like, yeah. Matt just <laughs> Matt just goes. He doesn't seem like he has a shortage of words. None. Or the, or the you know, he's not afraid to talk. <laughs> None at all. And it, but, but, you know, it's funny. He actually kind of apologized a couple times. I think he thought I was – because I was like, I just got to sit back and enjoy yeah. that. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I'm like, no, I really did just sit back and enjoy it because yeah. I, think it's, I think it's a couple things. Number one – um, I mean, who doesn't have respect for Matt Serra, right? If you're in yeah. the MMA game, you have respect for Matt Serra, obviously for his fighting accomplishments, but then just who he is as a person and all those things. So you're going to have respect for him. So any fighter that joins in immediately is going to have respect for him, right? But also with UFC Unfiltered, you know, it's not like they're – you know, the dependent on getting a headline or depending on getting yeah. a little news clip. It's or, an entertainment show. It's an entertainment show, yeah. right? And so Matt is able to – and obviously, you know, I've filled in for Matt. I've filled in for Jim. We've, I've, I've worked with both guys. Um, but Matt especially because he's been there and understands it. And Jim does a good job of it too. But, like, they just – they don't ask the typical questions and they kind of get outside. Kind of like we talked about, you know, how MMA Junkie Radio, those guys do a really good job of just putting guys at ease. In fact, yep. what I saw at the media day today in uh, – in Manchester, like Curtis Blades yeah. was kind of joking around, right? Like, it's the same questions. Yeah. And I get it, but, like, a lot of us, I mean, I'll t- I, all right, pulling back the curtain a little bit. I mean, honestly, media days were meant for people that were writing stories, yeah. right? And you needed to get your quotes about the upcoming story for your previews, for whatever. Less and less people are writing, if we're just being honest. There's yeah. less written content out there than ever before. Yeah, but people are, people are still trying to get their clips. They're still trying to get the what you think about this guy, what you think about your next fight, what you think about the hot topic, et cetera. So you're right. I mean, the interviews from you know place to place are going to be the same. But Matt is is able to just you know talk to these guys. Like Manel Cop, he's like, I mean, it's fight week. And, yep. and he's talking to Manel about, how would you get started in fighting? You know what I mean? He's like, I've never met you before. I'd love to hear about your background. And Manel's great. So – but Manel, Gregory, both, they were just like super at ease because they weren't talking about the fight stuff that they have been yeah. talking about over and over and over. And so they were great interviews, and I played an incredibly small part in them. <laughs> like, I, I think I got one or two questions. But but uh, but Matt Serra does a fantastic job. So check out this week, if you will, uh, USC Unfiltered. You get to see those great interviews. And then um, I actually, and it wasn't supposed to happen, this put me behind even further, um, I had been trying to speak to Danny Barlow, a left-handed guy that uh, – Came through the CFFC Contender Series, uh, made it onto the USC, broke his arm in his USC debut, but he's back on August 10th. And I had been trying to schedule him to speak with him for Grind City Media because obviously Grind City Media is owned by the Memphis Grizzlies. He's representing Memphis. So, so I knew once I started doing interviews for those guys, Barlow was one of the guys I wanted to get on. But I had some other interviews that popped up. So anyway, I was trying to get done this week. He's actually at a wedding right now. He's at a buddy's wedding, and we were kind of working text back and forth and trying to create it, and today is the wedding day. So I just assumed, like, we tried to do it yesterday. Yeah. Things weren't happening. Today's the wedding day, so I was just – I hadn't heard from him, and I was like, well, I'm not going to bother him on the wedding day. Like, we'll, we'll we'll do it next week or whatever. And I got a text, and he's like, bro, I can go at, like, noon if you're good. I'm like, well, okay, like, let's yeah. do it. So anyway, spoke to Danny Bartle, so that will be out on, uh, on Grind City Media as well. Um, well, just imagine how cool that is. He's at a wedding, and now he can be like, I'm getting an interview from the John Morgan. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, yes. guys, like, I, that goes over hold huge. the reception. Hold the reception <laughs> right now. I'll be in there in a little bit. That totally They're is. like, who's that? Who's John Morgan? You know the guy who asked the first question at Presser's? <laughs> oh. The blue shirt guy. Blue shirt guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, anyway, it was been, it's been a hectic morning, and yeah. it, it pushed That's me behind morning. a little bit. Yeah, very, very busy. All before I actually – Tonight, uh, I've got a red eye tonight to Tampa because I've got CFSC 133 uh, this Friday night as well. So, man, packing Yeesh. it in, staying busy, staying busy. But, I know how much you love those red eyes. Oh, I do, I do. 
get a, get a little sleep. I, it's a to be honest with you, I don't mind the red eyes with uh, commentating. Yeah. Because like I'm gonna go check in, hang out. Like it's different than you don't have to roll in hot like in the morning. Roll in hot and go to media day yeah. and do 16 interviews. Like I mean, obviously yeah. we did that a, a whole lot back in the day. It's That's it's no different fun. now. Like I'll roll in, I'll check in. Um, I got a little bit of work to do. I'll go to the weigh-ins. Um, you know, just talk to some guys. Get it's yeah, it's a it's a lot different. Let's yeah. just say that it's a <laughs> lot different. So I don't I don't mind the red eyes as much. Plus, yeah. I got my family back in town now, so it's like That's you know true. I, I want to spend as much time as I can with uh, with with my my wife and kid who are back in town from Mexico. They had a, they had a great time in Mexico. My, dude, dude, my kid, I don't think we talked about this. Did we? My kid, uh, no, I think this happened after we did last week's episode. My wife sent me a uh, 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 a video. They visited this like little small town a couple hours away from where they were in Mexico. And my kid rode this like zip line across a canyon. Oh wow! And he, I'm glad, dude. I'm glad I wasn't there. I, yeah. I don't think I would have been able to handle it. I think I'd. Have, I mean, you know, I, not to say that the attention to detail and safety <laughs> isn't the same everywhere in the world. <laughs> oh, I see what you're getting. You know at. what I mean? I but see I was, what you're getting at. <laughs> he's dangling over this canyon on this uh, zip line. I, I think I might have been a little. Ner- I mean, I, look, I was. I was clinching a little bit just watching the video, you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, my apologies to you, sir. It's been a hectic morning. Uh, it's all good. But, yeah, things, uh, as you kind of alluded to, things have been running a little behind. With our, We got to Abby over there in Manchester, and uh, for some reason— Did it, I hear the voice of Fada Hanoon over there yes, as well? I thought I heard yes, Fada Hanoon in Fada there Hanoon as well. Fada Hanoon is there. Yes. And uh, for some reason, our, our, our compatriots overseas do not seem to have good internet. No. And so, so we've been waiting. I've been waiting for him to uh, upload files. So I've had the duty of being the remote guy. So that entailed me getting up at five something this morning to start the day at six. Ooh. Even though it wasn't until seven. Even though they started a little bit early, as the UFC will do, uh, they started early with the interviews. So yeah, I've been sitting around waiting for videos to show up on YouTube to move them from one place to another to cut social. And it's just been, you know, poor Abby <laughs> over there. I mean, I know what it's like. We've all know what it's like. You when feel you're bad on. when the internet's bad. It's when the internet's it's bad because yeah, you just you stress about everything and everything. You just try to help out. So, but it's just been sucking because yeah, I got up extra early and like we we still have like <laughs> a bunch of videos left to do. So it's just like oh my goodness. So this was a nice little break, uh, actually recording this as opposed to sitting and watching watching YouTube status, progress bars. Watching <laughs> progress bars go, yeah. So uh, It is. Well, shout out to Abby Suman. I know that feeling, man. If you're, That is the most helpless feeling because you're yeah. basically at the mercy of whatever internet connection you have. And you know you got writers that are sitting there like waiting to write yep. on your staff. You got videos yep. that are waiting for the and like yep. you know that all eyes are on you to get this stuff posted yep. and yet I'm and like, it's just bro, frustrating. It's at my mercy. There's nothing I can do here. It, you th- it's not like they're in uh you know little dinky part in South America somewhere below in Brazil where you're just yeah, like yeah. you expect there to be shit problems. Yeah. You're in England. You're in Manchester for Pete's sake. It's like do they not have decent internet? Like, but I mean, to be fair, we've even had some places here in the states. We'll go to some random cities, and, and you're mm-hmm. just like, I don't understand how the internet doesn't work. This just happened to be one of those events, but definitely, you could tell there was definitely good involvement. I mean, there were a lot of longer interviews on a lot of the cats, but uh, I know the the English reporters have been just dying to get a show over there. Yeah. So a lot of them were chomping at the bit, and so obviously wanted to get their questions in there and talk to these guys. And the card's very, very heavy in, in you know in people that are over in that area. So um, good on them. So I didn't mind the fact that you kind of expected that it was going to be a longer yeah. you know media day because everybody was chomping at the bit to talk to these people. But, yeah, that's, so that's been today's uh, nice, fun long, fun time. So, yeah, I'd, so when you said that you were going to be a little bit late, I was like, Dude, it's whatever. Whatever. I'm, I'm literally staring <laughs> were, at a status bar. You we're very understanding. You're like, yeah, yeah it's fine. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so, is it time for our weather update? Can we do it? Do <laughs> Today is not so bad. We've actually had some um, rain recently. So, it's 102 right now. <laughs> But, uh, you know how ridiculous that sounds? Like, bro, cooled off? It's like 102? <laughs> the other night when I let the dog out, it was still over 100 and something. Oh, I'm <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> uh, it was still 100 and something. I was like, that's just ridiculous. You know? It was bad. I, you know, I let the dog out, and he just <laughs> he walk outside, and he's like, what, nah, the, what is this? Nah. This is, this is no fun. Uh, so yeah, it's still uh, it's still nice, warm, and hot. But I think it's because we had a little bit of rain. You feel the humidity a little bit more. So so I think it feels a little bit more muggy. But it did feel like it did cool down a little bit. But 
I mean, so I'm flying to Tampa, and I just I was looking oh, at the so I want to see. Feel it there. Well, I was thinking about because you said humidity, and it made me think. But you're gonna the, feel it. So it's only in the mid 90s there. But oh my gosh, yeah, it's supposed to rain today too. Uh, but it is going to drop to like 76 degrees. That's the thing you never get used to here. 16 years I've lived here, it's hot during the day. Like, and yeah. people say, like, how do you get used to it? I'm like, you don't. You just stay in the air conditioning. What you never get used to is walking outside at midnight and it's still like 100 degrees and it's yeah. just brutal. So there's your weather update. Do, 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 it's do, hot. Do. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Uh, I'm just going to give it a shout out in case anybody's considering uh, not being paid by anybody, uh, not uh, getting any promotional <laughs> considerations. But we would. But I, but I, but I will, T-Mobile. Uh, no, I'm about a, about a week, oh, yes, about a week right. and a half into the T-Mobile experiment. Uh, oh, it's right. good so far, man. I'm yeah. Using, uh, yeah, I'm using the wireless internet, and I'm telling you, if anybody's using T-Mobile out there, and uh, your internet, because my internet for Cox Cable here was $176 a month. My wife bought a phone for her mom, and so because of that, like we had to get, we got an upgrade or something. Anyway, I don't normally buy phones for myself, but we had a free one, so I went to uh, T-Mobile to get my new phone. I got the the 15 Plus now is what I got. Um, and while I was there, they were like. Hey, do you want to try a wireless internet? You know, they're trying to pitch it or whatever. Always, they're trying to upsell you. <laughs> this is the you. pack of gum that's at when you're leaving the grocery store, and they're like that. You have the, the the candy right there. It is. They're like, hey, how about this T-Mobile Wi-Fi? Yeah, I, you're right. But <laughs> you're 100 percent right. They upsold me on it. But my my thing. But it's fifty dollars a month. That's and ridiculous. so for that's fifty dollars so a month versus one seventy, and it's unlimited, right? And it's unlimited. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I, and and they were given a two week free trial, so they were like. You can try it for two weeks. If you don't like it, you can just bring it back and it'll yeah. be zero money out of pocket. So I was like, sold. So about a week and a half into it, I'm having no problems whatsoever. The only thing I did, it was weird. I don't know why this is uh, because in my – and if you guys have ever seen me do any video interviews, that's from my office in my house. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically I used to have my uh, – the, the, the router um, in the other room, in, yeah. the, in, in our bedroom – but that one, uh, this, this one, it does say it needs to be by window because it's like cell or whatever. It's wireless. It says you're, you're talking about the the, 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 the T-Mobile the, router. The T-Mobile itself. router, exactly. Yeah. Like it needs to be by a window. Um, and so where I had it, my bedroom was not near a window. So my desk is right next to a window. So I put that router right on my desk. I don't know if this is just a T-Mobile router or any router would do this. Um, but I put that T-Mobile router there. And it was giving feedback into my microphone, which was weird. It was yeah. like a like a like a clicking or whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know if a regular router does cell, that. I think it's it's the same thing with like your phone. Because you have cell, your cell right the there. Cell, if you have the cell, it's got to be that. So that was the only, and I couldn't I couldn't hear it audibly, but anybody I was talking to could hear it. Luckily, I had like a, luckily I had a conference call, so I wasn't actually recording anything. I had a conference call, and the on the conference call they were like, "Bro, your audio is jacked up," and I was like. It must be that because that's the only thing that's changed in my setup. Interesting. And it was. So I moved it. So if you're doing audio video recording or anything like that and you want to switch to it, keep, keep your keep router away from, from it. Um, but I'm telling you right now, man, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. And, again, if you're a T-Mobile customer, I, I don't know if they're still offering the deal, but it's only 50 bucks a month. So I'm just trying to save people money if I can because I yeah. know times are tight out there. Yes. It's, it's hard huge, for everybody. That's a huge drop. Saving 120 bucks a month, that's dude. Ridiculous. That's So on the back of it, and this this is more – Info than anybody oh, on here. Tech guy, tech talk. Does it tech have? Talk. Are you able to plug like your extern, like your internal router to it? Does it have like ports on the back? So if you want to have your own like router, you could. Underneath I mean, it? it's just it just is what it is. Like it's all in well, one. Well, the reason I asked is like this is where more tech talk. Like so, when I have my router plugged into the same my Cox Mobile, then I I get the IPs from my router. Right. So do you? Does everybody just log into your T-Mobile? Or yeah, does yeah, your router logs, logs in T-Mobile. In? Interesting. Look at you, bro. You got like gateways and. <laughs> well, I got the QNAP storage and other oh, okay, stuff that okay. I have to get plugged into it, so that yeah, I need to have that. But I, it'd be interesting. I'd like to maybe I'll look it up to see what. Sometimes sort of I come over and the cold back. coffee starts to, to walking me through like tech. <laughs> He's like, by the way, on the back end of the website, this I went into the uh, the directory of the, and, and I'm just like, uh huh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, we, I, had, we I, had some WordPress I, problems I, I, recently. I would have done that too, bro. That's probably the approach <laughs> I would have taken. I'm like, what is he talking about? So, yes. The, in if you in ever a past need, life, I was a computer, I was a computer uh, support If guy. you ever need tech <laughs> advice, I would say reach out to Cole. No, Cole, Cole Coffee loves – well, not tech advice, but you love talking gear. I Let's do, be I do like you it. You love but yeah. talking gear. If you catch me on site, if we're together, please – Please, I, I, I do. I, I dive down those rabbit holes. But if I'm not near you, please don't reach out because that shit drives me crazy. Because I get, I get I caught up in it. I used to do that it. for a living. Don't do I get that. caught up in it. And then, like, I go – it's like a – not an addiction, but, like, you want to solve a problem. So my brain likes that. So, I, like, I'll dive into it. And then I'm like, 
I get frustrated so when like I don't. So, somebody asks you a random question, and then like you, they forget about it, and you come back I'll, two weeks I'll, later. I'm and like, like, I was working on your. I was thinking about it. Have you? And they're like, bro, I sold that piece of equipment. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm like, please don't, <laughs> just don't. My brain does. My brain can't take it. But if I'm on site, I'd be more than happy to help. But. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, uh, listen, we will talk about USC three or four. But I guess first, I want to get uh, your final thoughts on uh, Jake Paul, Mike Perry. Obviously, that happened well after we left the USC yeah. Apex last week. That it was really. It kind of played out like I, I like I said it was. I yeah. said it was going to get stopped by the ref, and I didn't. I don't think I remember say, uh, said what round, but it played out exactly how I thought. I thought it would. so too. I mean, if anything else, I thought Mike was a lot more gun shy than uh, than I expected. Yeah. But I think that's the problem that uh, a bigger, much bigger man um, with longer reach poses for any particular fighter. I mean, Jake, his Dude, size they over like, him. They looked three different weight classes. <laughs> and, that, and that was the, that was the biggest thing. That I know a lot of people. I know Connor was shitting on the the size difference. You know, I don't I don't know if it was actually forty pound right. difference or whatever. But when they looked every bit forty pound difference, um, I was just surprised that you know, and I felt bad that Mike never really got to get started. He got some shots later on, and a lot of people were saying that was because you know Jake was looking like he was slowing down, and that's that's quite true. I mean, but uh, it was just it was it was just too much. I mean, like, and, and a lot of people raised. There's a difference of fighting with those gloves, the sweet science that we've been saying that mm-hmm. Jake has been working really, really hard on. And when you, it's the difference of just a bare-knuckle brawl, which is what Perry's good at. You didn't see any good footwork from his side. You know, Jake was – not that he – Anybody's going to say, like, dude, look at his footwork. But compared to Perry, his footwork looked really, really good. Yeah. He was able to move around, get in and out, and just made it uh, – just, you know, you saw Mike sort of chasing after him. He wasn't cutting the ring off. He wasn't doing anything. He was just following him. And then he was walking straight into these jabs that Jake was. And then he started battering him. And then it just it was getting to a point. I was like, dude, it's going to get stopped here soon. And it, it probably could have got stopped even earlier. But I think they, they gave Perry a... Uh, the benefit of the doubt and yeah, toughness. You know but what? When, once his face started blooding up and him getting bashed, I was like, dude, this could easily get stopped at any moment. You know what? And I, I apologize because I didn't note the referee. Um, just because, again, uh, you know, MMA, it would stick in my head, but yeah. boxing, it didn't. You're right. I think that referee did a good job of letting it go further. He could have stopped yeah, it earlier. He could have stopped it you know the whole I mean? round earlier at yeah. least or something. I mean, and even in that round, like, he was, he was trying. He was trying to give Mike a chance. I mean, like – he could have stepped in earlier with no he issue, could have but, I'm, but I'm glad he didn't because now there's yep. no oh you d- yeah there's there, no doubt I mean, zero controversy yep zero controversy no doubt at so. all and and for anybody to think that you know I mean that Jake did Jake looked great he looked great in that fight I mean and I could say almost to the fact that it looked like Perry didn't I could see where somebody maybe say will say Perry well Perry didn't show up he just that's the that's part of the sport if you have, if you don't allow your opponent to ever get started and you shut them off. Good on you. Yeah, that's what you're supposed that's to do. Supposed to you do. know, so he wasn't the same. That first knockdown didn't. It didn't appear. It almost like a like a push or more. It was yeah. weird. It was. A, but the second knockdown, like yeah. from then on, like he was. Yeah. He was not good. Yeah. It was. It was legit. Yeah. Man. It's. It was legit. Bottom line is Jake Paul is a good boxer. I say, again, I'll, I'll say it. He's I've got said great it. size, I, man. I, kid's I, huge. I don't think he's a world champion level boxer. You yeah. know what I mean? But he is a good boxer. Like if you wanted to just denigrate him as a YouTuber or whatever, like you're wrong. Like yeah. he's a good athlete and a good boxer yeah. and uh you know again still hasn't fought anybody his size still hasn't i mean all well, those we saw criticisms what happened when he fought a, a decent boxer and that was i mean right his boxing has gotten much better than when he fought fury the first time like agree. if they would fight again i would be interested to see how it would go this time around but we certainly we don't ever see that like why is he not calling him out for a rematch right you know like get that back but obviously the money that he's getting and what he's able to kind of pull out you know, I mean, like, he's got these random gas call outs, you know, the Alex Bahia and all these other ones. I'm just like, whatever. And I hate the fact that, you know, people still want to see that Tyson one. But I would be interested to see where he really wants to start diving back into boxing. You want to be this boxing guy? I mean, go for it. But on the flip side of that, if he can keep calling his shots and making tons of money fighting guys that have names that are willing to fight him, why not? You know what's interesting is it was funny, right? Because I, I was praising uh, Jake for taking that fight because I, you know I thought Mike. I mean, look, I might put up a fight. You know what I mean? Mike is a tough fighter. Uh, he did the best he could. Um, but I was praising him because we know that the, the the Mike Tyson fight is on the line. I'm like, if Mike Perry wins this, like he might lose that fight. 
Do you think it's possible he might lose that fight because he beat Mike Perry so convincingly? Like, is there any like you think there's any strange of people going? I mean, I mean I the only I'll, people that would matter would be the commission. And, they and at this nothing. point, like they would for them to turn around and say, "Oh well, we saw him really beat somebody up. We probably should safeguard Mike." They would they should have done that from the get go. I mean, like those are the only people. I mean, nobody else is going to stop it. Netflix certainly isn't going to be like, "Hey, you know, we kind of went in on this already. Let's let's just give up on it." you would think they would have already did it by now, you know? So I don't know. I think if something comes out health wise from Tyson's side, that then makes people question the fact of whether the fight should go forward. Then I think, but as is right now, if we don't hear anything else that says that there's some sort of further detriment, Mm -hmm. I don't see why anybody would stop it at this point. Yeah. Almost. Especially if he calls out for it. It it occurred to me in my head. And as the words were coming out of my mouth, I realized like, no, this is no, it's not going to stop. Like (laughs) it it really, in my head, as you were saying it, I'm like, I wonder. And then as I, as the words came out, I'm like, no, nobody's stepping in here. Yeah. I mean, I think there's so much money to be made. Like unless the, one of the major parties being either Mike or Tyson or say Netflix or somebody has a change of heart. No, it's going to happen. It's going to, it sucks. I know. I know. And, you know, and, and again, I'm just, I'm putting it out there now. I will be watching. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying like, oh my God, I'm so upset about this. I'm not going to watch it. But this just, if we think anything crazy is going to happen, I mean, and even on that one too, I mean, like it is Mike Tyson, but it's an older Mike Tyson. And from what we've seen, Jake and where Jake's at, I'll give the fight to Jake at this point. I agree. You know? And I mean, Hate on me as you want. I mean, like, I, I love Tyson. I think, you know, what he's, you know, meant to the sport and just, I guess, just from us as being in that, alive in that time when he was the biggest thing around, you know, you have this sort of, like, just nostalgic feeling when I hear his name, you know, and you think about what he was done, that it's just hard not to sort of revere him. I mean, he has he's no angel by any sense of the meaning, no. you know, the word, but... You know, he still reminds but me as an of, athlete. of as, you know, and just like a part of your our life. Like that was such a huge part of our life. You know, like I remember getting together and watching like Tyson fights back when going and watching like and, and getting the money and getting people together to yeah. get the pay-per-view was much bigger than there was yeah, no yeah. fucking streaming. There was no there streaming. Was no, like, I'll, I'll just get know. a link or whatever. Yeah. Like, no, you had, you had to get you had, you had to, to get your money together. The bar, and, hey, the bars would be packed, oh, you know, the restaurants and stuff. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, so like it, it's. It's it, it's a it's a part of our I guess you know just us growing up that it means something you know as opposed to I don't know about what hey, let's not, hey, now let's not even... be silly. Mike Tyson's punch out act like oh. act like you didn't play the hell out that game <laughs> act like you didn't play yeah. the people of a certain age yeah. will know you oh, played the great. hell out of that game boy that, that talking about making you nostalgic that game right there oh I remember going crazy like first time I beat it first time you beat Mike like imagine. Ah. If, if a kid that is used to the graphics and effects and games right now, if they were sat in front of that game without knowing anything involved with it, change the name or whatever, yeah. just say, hey, we have a boxing game we want you to play. Oh. Tell me what you think of it. They're like, is, they, this, a, is this for your phone? Yeah. They, <laughs> they, I, I wonder how long they'd last before they were just, like, disgusted with the level of what it was. But back then, that game was everything. That was everything. Like, name any person that lived in that time that was a gamer that played any sort of games that didn't play that game, and I think you'd be, you couldn't find anybody. Everybody did. Everybody yeah. played that game. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not in any rush to watch this guy that was like a childhood hero in a sense, you know. Potentially get potentially destroyed. just get maimed, you know. Uh, and maybe maybe they would stop that fight. If, maybe if they were starting some signs, maybe the, the ref does stop that fight sooner. Maybe it doesn't allow it to go to like where Mike, where he's like, okay, this is a younger cat, he could take some more damage, he's going to recover. Whereas, you know, they're going to step in immediately. And even then, it's like if you know that you have to potentially step in early to safeguard a fighter because of his age, which you know that it's going to be on the mind of the ref. Why even why allow it to happen? Fight? Why even allow it to happen? Is there any? Is there any chance? All right, <laughs> now I'm thinking too. I'm thinking. Not that Jake Paul cares because he has no problem being the villain or the enemy, but is there yep. any chance it backfires on him? Like if he goes out there and, I don't know, lands one punch and Mike Tyson starts wild, or it just looks bad. I mean, it look, I, I don't know. Is there any way Maybe that it comes he, out making him look bad? Like why did you beat up this old Mike Tyson? I think if he stood over the dead body in the ring and <laughs> like was like, you look at me now, or do one of those fingers, oh. then I can see where people pissed off. But right. if, he, if he showed respect – and didn't say anything. That's just part of the sport. I mean, 
people you, you sign up people for it, have right? died in boxing you yeah. know is anybody is anybody like chasing those guys no you know no 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 you know so i don't know i mean certainly you know us that have grown up watching tyson wouldn't you know appreciate it but at the end of the day we'll get over it <laughs> yeah and <laughs> i think mo- and, and most i mean people of this generation aren't going to care because they don't have that same reverence for mike tyson yeah. right they're just going to be like yo jake paul like, that dude up. they might even want to see the standover of, right <laughs> the standover the dead body so moment true. like bro you lost a chance to teabag a bird's <laughs> <laughs> so true uh all right i did uh by the way real quick before we move to 304 um i did bounce out of the apex rather quickly on saturday yeah, you did. i watched you leave did. <laughs> i was like there they go and me even amy because he uh, was like i think she noticed you first she's like there goes john and you look like you were on a mission you were like yeah, you, you yeah zoomed out of there. i had to, i don't know what i was doing i had something to go do i can't remember what it was uh, you missed out on that great interview. Well, we that's what that's what I was going to at the end. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, first of all, let actually, me just... say two things: Verna and uh, who was right before? Is it Garcia? Was that from the same fight? Steve Garcia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have been the comment. Yep. So Steve Garcia. He's great. I like Steve Garcia, man. Yeah, that was a great fight. He's a good dude. Um, anything from Verna that uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I haven't gone back and watched it. So anything? Right, I'll just let me just say first. I got that fight completely wrong. Yes, I, so I, did I. I, oh my god! I just, I mean, uh, and I heard. Um, I mean, we knew that there was a possibility that if the fight got that way, but I didn't see it her wasn't being even competitive. That, uh, that's that's the part it I didn't. see. Wasn't even competitive. That's the part I didn't see. And uh, Diego Ribas, uh, shout out to him. He's always got great uh, Portuguese language, Brazilian insight. Um, but he said, I guess Amanda had had some issues with her camp, and I don't know if that factored in because it just seemed like. It just seemed like poor fight IQ to me, if I'm being honest yeah. with you. Like, why would you engage if you're in, in those situations yeah. whatsoever? I mean, I, as for somebody that, granted, we we get things translated in Fight Week, and, and, a, and a Brazilian media outlet definitely will get more of the back story of what's going on that maybe we don't get. I got no inclination. Anything that we saw during that Fight Week that she was going through, anything that would affect the fight. Right. I didn't either. You know, when she, when she stepped in there... She was, you know, walking the round, looked like she was engaged, looked mm-hmm. like she wanted to go across the ring and just tear Verner's head off. But, yeah, once the fight started, I was just like, wow, what? I completely <laughs> picked this wrong. I mean, we knew Verner was going to be tough. We knew that there was the possibility that if it got to the ground that she was going to have uh, the po- potential to take over the fight. I just didn't realize that it would look so dominant when it got to that point. The transition, if anybody, like, she was saying, even saying, like, uh, in the post, she was like, or maybe it was like, uh, maybe it was in the media day. Oh no, I was. It had to be the because yeah, I wasn't at media day. She was talking about how yeah, my my style is unique, or people say it's kind of weird. And she's like, but I like being weird. But she, I like being weird. But I mean, the way that she was transitioning from things, and eventually how she transitioned to the arm bar was just absolutely. It was just sick. It was so incredible that uh, man. Um, for her to say that she deserves to be up there and that she pre- presents a challenge for Whaley, she does. Whaley's just so damn strong, but man, when it comes to what Vierna can do on the ground, we saw her. She was manhandling Lamosh as well, and we were saying how Lamosh was going to be very, very strong. Physically so, strong. And- so, I mean, I think Vierna, I mean, maybe she's another one that we have to kind of put in the same boat that we, when we say Whaley, how how strong that she is, that maybe she does. And when she gets to the ground, man, vierna has got a chance. She does have a chance. I mean, her, her ground game, after seeing what she did um, – it's hard for me to doubt. I I don't I can't doubt her at this point, you know, and I will give her a decent shot if she gets that title shot. And I mean, she's right she's smart to, to, to call for it and she's in the right position for it. Um I think she's definitely um She's, she's right there she's in the in mix. Contention. She's, she's in right contention. there in the mix. Yep. She's right there in the mix. Uh by the way, it's funny I'm sitting here uh was about to talk about USC three or four, but the I just got an email from the UFC I don't know, I guess it's the marketing. What would we mail at UFC? Yeah. But anyway, UFC VIP experience for Noche UFC. Incredible the prices on these tickets, oh man. Gosh. These are the VIP tickets. Now, and granted, these are not these are not face value tickets. These are VIP packages. Uh, the first one is called the Rising Star Ticket and Hospitality. Uh, you get an official ticket on either the 100 or 400 level. So that would be either the first, first floor or the, top. or the very top. Yep. Uh, in-venue hospitality with USC athlete appearances. So that means green rooms. So that means food and alcohol covered. Yeah. Reserve seat at the ceremonial weigh-ins and a private VIP entrance to the sphere. That is starting at $3,000 a ticket. 
That's not as bad as I it's thought. It's not it would as be. bad. That's honestly, I thought yeah. that too. That's really not as bad. Here's the the I next mean, it's level. Crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's not like what we thought. It, it's not too crazy. I agree. How many like, tiers are there? So there's three. Well, there's four tiers. Oh, that's goodness. that's tier that's, number one. That's, that's, tier that's, number one. <laughs> that's the rising star. All right, here's the <laughs> tier number two challenger level ticket and hospitality. Essentially the same thing, um, except uh, that this would be in the 200 or 300 level. So this this may give you which is the better. I was going to say a lot this of gives say you those are the better the better ranges is the two or the three. This actually gives you insight into yes exactly that right yeah. because. Um, this so that I said that one was three thousand dollars. This is the same package: official ticket, in venue hospitality with UFC athlete appearances, reserve seat, the ceremonial weigh-ins. Post. Oh, this does have a post weigh-in reception as well. So after the weigh-ins, a little cocktail hour over there as well. Um, this is fifty three hundred and fifty dollars per person. So That's almost twice. So twenty three hundred dollar difference. Yeah, almost twice between one hundred and four hundred, two hundred, three hundred. So if you are thinking about buying tickets to the <coughs> the sphere, and I. I will actually – it's funny because uh, my wife really wants to go to this event because it's Mexican Independence Day. She's from Mexico. It's Sphere. She really wants to go. watch that shit on TV. <laughs> <laughs> don't you – honey, this is going to be one of the most impressive productions ever done. Don't you want us <laughs> to get the TV experiences? I would hate to rob yeah. you. I mean, they are spending millions on production. I would hate to rob you of the experience of watching it on TV just – so that you could be in the building. Like you literally could hire a whole mariachi band and a party for your block <laughs> and then put the fights on like the screen or like something <laughs> for like less a five than one <laughs> ticket. <laughs> Sorry. So, the place. The, so the two, it sounds like the 200, 300 level. So if you're looking to buy tickets, it looks to me like they're saying the 200, 300 level is going to be the best place to, to and, be. Well, and part of that too, and then just, uh, and I'll let you get to the yeah, other yeah. ones. If you're on the 200, the 300 level, what happens or, or when you're in the 100, to see the the top of the screen, you have almost have to physically sort of pick yourself up and turn around to see some of the view, or you're cranking your neck all the way to the back. If you're in the second level, you have an easier access of when you actually do look up and look back without seeing all those other levels above you. Yep. And then the same thing with like the 300, you're you're still you're able to see the top nicely. You don't have that, and you don't have to look back to see all the people behind you. Whereas if you're at the 400, you're pretty much the screen doesn't go behind you, depending on where you're at. It's almost like you look up and you're going to notice that the wall's behind you where it ends. Right. So the view, you don't get the full sort of like, oh, everywhere I look, it's the screen that you get if you're like at the 200 and the 300 level. Yep. Um, so there is a difference of the view. But when I look at that package, so after the post, say, say the post weigh-in, bro, you could go to the bar and go hard and never get, never the, get, never get the dollar value never get of like paying twice. As like, for like the seats. Like your boy John Morgan could do some damage oh. on open bars, but I can't do that much no, damage. No, I mean, so as opposed to that viewing, that's that starts to getting, but in, the, in terms of ticket price, that is kind of getting to the range of what I thought generally a price would be. Would be. So I'm interested to see – how we haven't, yeah, we haven't seen the actual ramp ticket prices yet. Yeah, like how do you ramp that up from this point? So I guess all right. So now what's what's right, the next? So thing? the next one is the champion level. This is a, a same thing, essentially the same thing, um, except that this is a floor level uh, ticket. So it's still the same thing. Oh, and a post fight octagon experience. That means you actually get to go inside the octagon afterwards. So you get to be on the floor during the event. And uh, you get to go inside the octagon afterwards to take a picture inside, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's that's once in a lifetime type stuff that you can actually walk into the octagon after the event. So that's pretty neat. Um, and its section is on the floor. Now I'm guessing if it's the floor level, it's going to be uh, the standing room only tickets, right? I think Dana yeah. White was on uh, what's uh, Pat McAfee, I think, is where he said there's going to be standing room only tickets. But that kind of makes sense, right? Because that was one of the things you and I mentioned from the start that we were a little bit concerned after being inside the spheres, how small that floor area was. Cause I saw a lot of people kind of saying, Oh my gosh, like standing room only, like what the hell is that? Um, I guess they did say only 10 fights, which is, I mean, that's still going to be like five hours of standing. But um, I mean, that kind of alleviates some of the concern that we had before, right? Where we said like, there's not any room for seats. Well, it turns out we were right. There's not any room for seats, um, but they're just going to have everybody in standing room only. So that is a $9,500 But you figure there's still got to be that inner sort of circle. Oh, sure. The commission that, seats. The commission seats uh, and everything. You know, Buffer will have a seat. Yeah. You know, all those, for sure. But And I think they're still wondering, like, are, 
if it's like a regular music show, all that sort of stuff happens in front of the stage. And I think even when we saw Ratner talking uh, to Junkie Radio, he's like, you know, are, is the octagon going to be pushed forward? Are there going to be people behind it in between the screen? We still don't really don't know. know that, you know. Probably not because I think it just – I think they would rather leave that room for like media mm -hmm. or like Dana's section or something like that. And I think it's just too much. They would have to push the octagon too far forward to make room for people to wrap to around the back side of it. Back side of it. So um, I think it probably will look like it is like on a, on a typical concert, but with some sort of a buffer ring where you could put like commission yep. Dana's people <laughs> or yep. something along those lines. Um, because I think at some point, if you pull it too far forward, maybe the sight line from the top 400 starts getting affected. Right, because now you're encroaching on the... Now you're looking too the... far down. Yep. Yeah, it's too far forward. You know, then you're forcing them to look at the screen. But you're almost going to have to look at the screen because I think you're going to be missing. If you're if, if it was a regular fight and when you never look up at the screen, like if you're at a venue and you're like, I don't want to look at the screen because I want to uh, pay attention to being in the room, I think it's going to be kind of flipped here yeah. at there because you're going to want to see you're whatever gonna they're the going to put up on the thing. 100%. And, and maybe it was you we were talking about or somebody that was saying like, you know, since maybe they're going to create more theatrical video pieces about Mexican heritage and some of the athletes. And that's why they're not going to have too many fights because they have to make room 100%. for all these video packages yep. and stuff. So yeah. we might see a bunch of like l literal movie quality video inserts within these sort of things. So look, it could I'm be not going to lie, man. I'm looking forward to it. Dude, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm looking more dope. forward to this than any other fight of the year. And, I, and that's no disrespect to the fights themselves, but this is just going to be such a unique experience. I'm, I'm thinking, and I wanted to ask Dana last time that we had, um, that we had one of these media days, but I was like, it was at the end of like the last, I think 300 or 303. The questions already went on forever. I'm wondering if they're going to do like what fish did and some of the other ones where they, they used a lot of drones during the live production for the broadcast oh, as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm envisioning if they're going to go really all out. And I was wondering if that's part of the cost that, you know, Dana has been sort of talking about how, you know, they, ha they had to bring a director in that just managed the, the cameras that were with the drone teams and stuff like that, let alone the director that was running the actual show production. Well, that makes sense because they said they've got multiple production trailers, So they're going right? to be multiple yep. productions. So I'm envisioning that we're going to probably see and why they say that will be something that's never going to be replicated in other sports things because I envision that they're going to have, like, multiple drones going out, partaking in shots of the action as well as fan crowd stuff, stuff like – you know, like what Fish did on theirs, they moved it from outside of the in like the 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 lobby areas, flying through different apparatus in through the doors, into the seats, going through the seats and down onto the stage. Imagine some of these runs that they can do, like going and then going down into, you know, the fight open or something along those lines. Like it's gonna be absolutely insane. And so I wanted to ask Dana, but I was like, we we're already like 40 minutes. It was like a really long day yeah. session. But I envision that some of the production stuff that we're gonna see has to be um it's going to be incredible that i think they're they're going to build some time in to 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 really use this sort of stuff and the cost is going to be has to be incredibly oh it's just through the roof you know nuts. through the roof but all right well that's my that's my that's my uh prediction that we're going to see some crazy drone use in this venue. Well, well, this is how they're going to make up some of those costs. Now, <laughs> elite level ticket and hospitality. Now, this is a floor level ticket um, this is all the other stuff. Now you're also on the side of the stage during the weigh-ins. So you get to be on the side of the stage at the weigh-ins. Well, where are the weigh-ins going to be? Well, we don't know yet. Why is – there is no side. Mm, so is the weigh-ins going to be at the Sphere? No. Well, they have to be, right? Or maybe outside? There's just no – yeah. Or maybe outside? Because there is no side. I bet they do a stage outside. I bet they set up a stage outside. Yeah, even that's then, what they're going to do. Even when we've done no, – like, you know what they're going to do? I guarantee you. They're going to set up a stage outside and have the sphere in the background. Guaranteed. That makes sense. Guaranteed. Because there is no side area. Yeah. It, like, it's going to be out in that parking lot. I guarantee – well, I guarantee. What am I saying? Yeah. But that would – if 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 all – you know, you can do whatever you want, what yeah. would you want to do? You'd want to go out into that parking lot, set up a stage. Obviously, you don't have a backdrop on the stage. You don't have a step and repeat. Yeah. And you just have the sphere in the background with graphics on it, and you do the – that's yeah. my guess. That's my guess. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's kind of a tip off with whatever they're trying to do because there is no side to the stage at any weigh-ins. So like true. the other weigh-ins, if the any if, if you're looking at the weigh-ins, the 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 ceremony weigh-ins, one of the 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 seats that are off to the side, that's usually where they'll put like the the spill off of the guests, right. the family or whatever. But that's not. 
I mean, I guess if that could be it, if they if they have something like that. But man, I don't so, know. It's so interesting. You, that. you also get custom fight kits. So that's dope. That's dope. All but right. How much is that? Would you like to take a guess? <laughs> Ten thousand. Message us. Holy <laughs> cow! <laughs> they, they don't, don't want to put. They don't, don't want to put ten thousand. No, they're in, like, in bro, the thing. just just send me a send me a little note. We'll talk about it. Well, I wonder if it, if it's too because they it's not it's the kind of thing where they they want to bulk you into at least a couple tickets. They don't want to sell solo tickets for that. They want to do group like that's a group right sort of thing where they're like, okay, we want to charge you. If it was solo, we would charge you ten grand, but for two for two people. We'll go eight grand each, so they total. get sixteen yeah, out get a, instead yeah, of you know it's whatever. It's a deal. It's a deal. Hey. <laughs> it's a deal. I mean, the fight kit itself <laughs> is like two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, it's great. All right, uh, looking forward incredible. to it. Still a couple months away. I guess about a month and a half at this point. But uh, yeah, it's I'm, coming up though. I am looking forward to it. It's man. coming up. I am really, really looking forward to it. Uh, when are right. we going to hit the headliner? <sighs> Isn't that crazy? Because as we're saying that it's coming up, but we still have yet to see the headliner. That like at crazy. what point, when you're worried about ticket sales and you're costing, you're asking an arm and a, I mean a, a boatload of money, they're not just going to come because it's Mexican Heritage. Nah, Day. you know what? I'll, you okay. need to have, you need to start announcing who the headliner is. You know what? It's seven weeks away. Uh, That's so you're crazy. right. It's seven weeks away. That's great. But you know what? I will, I will say this. I bet that show sells out if they don't even have a single fight announced. It's the sphere. You want to see this fear. You know it's a one-time shot. You know it's a one-time show. You've heard Dana talking about how amazing this is going to be, how unique, how different, how whatever. I bet that show sells out instantly without – and let's be honest. I'm sure uh, all the hotels are, are going to be having tickets for the whales. You know what I mean? Like even more so than they would be at a normal UFC event. I bet they're going to be buying blocks of tickets because they want to have it to give out to their VIPs. So I bet you this fear would sell out without even a single fight being announced. That's just, it's mind numbing that they could even they could, do they could something have the like highest that. Highest gate, because they said they're going to. Without ever having oh my, the headliner? They should do it just to do it. They, I was going to say, you, you they can should never do say that, that just to do that. Because that's never been done. Like, it doesn't make any sense at all. I would put that's them, like saying, trust us. Bro. Trust us. That's like saying, they should hey, do this that. is going to be the greatest event you've ever seen, and then not tell who the headliner, or and then have the headliner. <laughs> it's almost like they've done this before. I kind of want to see it now. I kind of <laughs> want to see him go on sale with no fights announced, and just it sell out, and they'd be like, I mean, how is it? When does it go on sale? It's got to go. On, it usually a month out. Uh, no, they're usually eight eight weeks or more. I was going to say like it should it's be. It's got to be, be like on sale ASAP. like now or something. It's got to be like ASAP. Either that or they just know like there's going to be so few tickets going to the general public they don't even care. Do you think they make the decision like, all right? Two two possibilities, guys. We just immediately come out and say it's Valentina and and uh, Alexa. Alexa, and just say here's your card. And we're worried about the other little sort of stuff because they've done that before, where they've come out with the headliner and then they build the card around that. Mm -hmm. Or do they say, guys, because I'm not worried about Valentina saying no. I don't think it's an issue of that right there. I think they're still trying to maybe fully flesh out the card. Do you think that they're afraid? And and instead of saying like, well, we're not sure if people want to spend the kind of money knowing that that's the headliner. Let's just keep touting the fact that here's a great card, here's a great card, one of a lifetime, one and done, you know, and, and then just say, like, that's a better play that people will buy into the idea of being in, at a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity as opposed to going to a fight that's uh, an Alexa Grasso 100%. or whatever. 100%. That's what I'm saying. They should just not even announce a single fight and put it on sale, that's and I bet crazy. it sells out. And it could. Which would sound more – which sounds better? Just even when I was just describing it in my head – I want to go to a once in a lifetime opportunity as opposed to like I don't really care who the That's headliner it. is. Yeah, who's fighting? Don't know. How crazy. Don't, don't know. That? Don't know. And you spent 10,000 ticket? Sure did. That's crazy. People are going to do it. People are going to do it. <laughs> All right, UFC 304 is this weekend in Manchester. You said you you watch most of media day today. I mean, uh, you For know, $10,000 you should get to drive one of the drones. That's if it's gonna get <laughs> The drone should pick you up and <laughs> carry you into the <laughs> To the arena. I want drones that bring your beer. You oh. just go those. They, you can control those. Like you just hit a button and it comes and it just <laughs> drops a beer off right to you. I'm off. like, sir, I'm gonna need that drone committed to just me, please. <laughs> just put that shit on loop. Yeah. By the time you get back there, have it pick one up and just come drop it back <laughs> off. <laughs> pick up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, sir, are you done? You want me to turn that that mode off? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Do you know who I am? Just keep the loop going. <laughs> 
Sir, the drone needs to uh, dock for recharging. <laughs> yeah, recharging. It's made so many loops at this point. It's out of energy. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, UFC 304 in Manchester. Looking forward to it. Obviously, feel bad for everybody. It's got to stay up till 5 in the morning, but we've done it before, so it is what it is. It happens. Uh, I am actually – did you hear anything at all? Was it brought up? We were actually talking kind of off air about uh, trying to guess why um, – because even at UFC Unfiltered, we weren't sure. Muhammad Kaya versus Manel Cop to me, is one of the most intriguing fights on the card. Yeah. And it got moved to the early prelims. We were kind of thinking maybe, um, I don't know, maybe that's almost put in there as an enticement to, like, a high-level fight early on for people to see. Um, I don't know. You know, we've talked in the past that sometimes they'll do that for, uh, like, TV commitments and things like that when somebody is – tied to a market where it would uh, behoove their audience to have yeah. it early. In the, but I don't think that's the case. So I'm just wondering. Uh, if something's wrong with one of them? I don't know. It's just weird. Why are they on the early prelims? It made no sense to me whatsoever. Well, like, I mean, why isn't it the featured prelim or something? I mean, like, no offense to you know, Nathaniel Wood. I mean, like, that's a great fight. But as for, like, if that is the featured prelim, you know, like, you have two guys that are higher ranked than both guys that are involved in the other one. And Mikhaev, I mean, like, he's been a guy they've been touting for a while. I, I mean, like, and cop both of them. And I'm, well, Grant, I'm looking at the Tapologies uh, ranking, so I'm not quite sure where they actually sit in the UFC rankings right now. But I mean, like, Mokayev is number six and Kopp is number eight in the official flyweight rankings. It doesn't make any sense to put them. It's it's almost a number one contender fight. It's, it's, At worst, it's yeah. to get a number one it's, contender yeah, fight. That's it. That that's is it. the worst it is. I mean,. I would hate that conspiracy theory. Think that they think that if something's wrong with cops one of gonna them, cops going to miss weight, or cops going to miss weight, or one of them's something's going on with one of them that they just don't want to to put a fight that's at at risk. But I mean, even then, like you have multiple fights that are after it that don't make any sense that they're above it. You know, like no offense to to Molly McCann and Bruno Brazil, but I'm like. Honestly, if you're not going to put it as the feature prelim, it should be right next to it or something. I mean, like, yeah, and it's going to be a, it should be a banger. I mean, like, it should be, uh, it's going to be gangbuster. I mean, how is it not? I mean, I don't get it. I that doesn't make any sense. I don't get it either. That's weird. Until you said that, I, I didn't even really <sighs> dive into the card, but yeah, it doesn't make any sense how how early on in the fight night it is. Like I said, we we, we theorized that maybe they were like, well, let's put on a high-level fight early in the night, you know what I mean? So people that are showing up early, they got, you know, a big one, but... Oh, you're talking about the locals? Yeah, yeah, you know? That, well, that would make... If you're, if you're seeing... You're, now when you say it like that, because we're forgetting, this this is going to... When does this start? I think midnight or something? So the, the main card we figured out today is 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, England is five hours ahead of East, so the main card will start at 3 a.m., so that means if that's 10 p.m. Is it only five Eastern, hours? I thought it was. Five hours out of Eastern, eight hours out of us. Okay. Um, so that that's means. That's my confusion. I thought it was eight hours, but yeah, eight hours from. Yeah, so that means the first fight of the night starts at 11.15 p.m. local time. When you when, when now when you say it like that, that makes more sense. That does make sense. Right? Like, if like, you show up early, it's 11.15, let's give you something. You want to give something to the something. locals, give you something. That, yeah. Now, that makes, that makes more sense because in terms of just in a viewing sense, like – of me, like a, as a American watching, right, or right. somebody that's watching that's like diehard that likes it, I it makes me shake my head. But if I'm there, it's late and they're already like, "Hey, we know you all have been drinking all day just to get in here. Give them a banger to keep it going." That makes sense. That's what I'm thinking. That that's the only thing. And if that's the case, then I'll say kudos. Then yeah, that's, that's smart thinking. That that is smart thinking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Now I completely forgot about the time difference. I mean, it's those poor bastards. Like you <laughs> finally get an event over there. And they're making them stay up all night long to watch the fights. I mean, out, even outside of the guys that actually have to fight and, like, you know, perform at such a high level that they have to change their whole sleep schedules as this week. And I know Arnold Allen, I think, or maybe it was one of the other ones that they were talking about. No, maybe it was Giga or somebody was like, uh, I can't remember who it was in the media day. The thing kept buffering. I, I lost track. But um, <laughs> they was talking about, like, no, it's not as bad. You know, they just start staying up later. They, you know, they – sleep later in the day and so they're changing themselves around but it's just unfortunate that that's the last thing that you have to do like especially one more thing yeah one more thing you have to think about i i get it when we go to places like saudi arabia and abu dhabi like there's a weird time difference and they're trying to cater to the u.s market and other kind of stuff but like to have a local show that you want the locals to be there and then you're going to make them go 
at the middle of the night to watch their their fighters, like yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Well, I will offer a suggestion because eight years ago was UFC 204. All right, it was also in Manchester. Um, so it was 100 UFCs ago. That was, of course, Michael Bisping versus Dan Henderson, the rematch in Manchester. Um, and the strategy that we used was we had rented an Airbnb that week. We were rolling deep at, 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 at uh, MMA Junkie at that point. Uh, you know, Simon Head was there with us. Abby was certainly there. Pear was there as well. Sandu was there. And we had a crew in there. And I'm going to make the suggestion to fighters now. I know it's a little late in fight week, but you can still enact this. What we did is we just drank heavily every night. <laughs> And we drank heavily until the wee hours of the morning so that we would stay up until, you know, a good 6, 7 o'clock in the morning um, and then crash out. And then we were pretty toasty at that point. So we'd really kind of sleep the day away to kind of nurse our wounds. And then we would wake up the next night, uh, you know, late in the day, get our media obligations done, and then we'd start drinking heavily again. Uh, So I'm just going to throw it out there. Maybe the fighters just want to just, I mean – your dedication to your craft just, is is <laughs> the passion. I I don't know if they recover um, as well as you guys would. Right, right, right. Following that heavy training regime, <laughs> but uh, oh, I mean it's certainly it's certainly worth an option. It's certainly worth an option. Even though if I had to pick, um, you know, a country where some of the fighters are probably used to doing that sort of thing, I would it think might, England's, might England's probably okay. You know, it's funny. I'm looking at that card. God, but that card. How about that? I I didn't remember this about that card. The first fight of the night was a decision, and the last fight of the night was a decision. Everything else was a finish the rest of the night. Mike yeah, Perry. They're sleepy. They want to go to bed. <laughs> they want to get out of here. Go <laughs> to bed. They have to go home and go to bed. Mike Perry actually beat Danny Roberts in the second fight of the night. Mark, that had to be one of his early fights then with him. Yeah. Mike, uh, Mark Diacchese was on there. Leon Edwards, of course, famously was on the prelims. Uh, Brad Pickett suffered a loss there to Yuri Alcantara. Mursad Bektic oh, I loved Russell his Dunn. walk-ins. Brad Pickett. He'd always come out with, like, the newspaper. Yeah. And all that shit. It was just so, like, something so English about it. That it was, was just, always super was English. So cool. Brad Pickett's a legend, man. If you were around at that time, you know Brad Pickett's a legend. Stefan Struve was on there. Jimmy Manoa uh, beat OSP. Here's another one that I learned today that I didn't realize. a good card. So uh, the co-main event, Vitor Belfort lost to Gegard Mousasi. But Gregory Rodriguez – was in the corner of Vitor Belfort. So 100 UFCs ago in Manchester, Gregory Rodriguez was in the corner of Vitor Belfort. Now, eight years later, 100 UFC later, he's on the main card in Manchester, his first fight outside of the U.S. or Brazil. Wow. That's um, a cool story. Pretty cool story, right? Uh, that, that's that's uh, very cool. You know, it's I mean, it's just more coincidence than anything else, but it's still cool. You know what I mean? Here that's I was very cool. 100 UFCs ago exactly, and now I'm, I'll go from the corner to being on the main card of the pay-per-view. That's pretty cool. Oh, that cool story. That, that came out today. Cool. That actually came out of the MMA Review Day. That should be a good fight. Should be a really good fight. That should be a lot of fun. I mean, look, that should be a banger with Christian Leroy one. Duncan. Yeah. I, I still think, you know, if, if again, if that was Rodriguez. the strategy to Rodriguez. I think I did. I just love that guy's story, man. And just like, oh, he's man. He's the best. He's so good. Like, I love his interviews, man. Like, I remember when the first time we interviewed him, I was just like, I love this dude. He was just honest and open. And it helped that he spoke, spoke English. So he was like, we were able to make that connection, which – it's always so hard sometimes with some of the Brazilian athletes and stuff, but yeah, he's a. That's gonna be a hell of a fight, man. I always feel bad when he loses, though. I don't like watching him lose. He's a nice guy. He's, he's a, one of the nice. I mean, he's one of the we say that about guys. a lot of guys, but he's a he's really, really nice guy. Such a nice dude. And Duncan is Duncan's a he beast, was, man. He uh, it was so cool today, man. He was again. We were we were interviewing him, and he was, we got he was talking about his family and stuff, yeah. and he, he actually like. Uh, he actually like took his phone and like and like held it up to the camera oh. so you could see like his wife and kid yeah. and all, on the picture it was. How can you not like the dude? Uh, I mean, he's getting ready for a cage fight and he's like, "Look at my wife and kid on my phone. Yeah. They're awesome." That's so cool. Uh, main event. Who'd you end up? Uh, who'd you end up going with in the main event? Man, I went Leon. Leon, it's it's I, hard to, it's hard to pick against Leon at this point, but <coughs> I'm not. I think a lot of people. For so, I, I still don't get it. I think a lot of people don't like Bilal. I don't get yeah. it. Why? I don't understand how you could not like the guy. But I think a lot of people are quick to write him off. I think this could be a very competitive fight, and it's I'm not ruling Bilal out of it. It's but it is, it's hard to pick against Leon right now. Yeah, but man, uh, Bilal has everything. Uh, he's he's got great. He's got good striking. I think a lot of people don't give him the credit. They think he just wants to get you know, get a hold of guys and get guys get down and kind of control them. But I think he's got all the skill sets to to pose a problem to Leon. I mean, we never. I mean, some people might say that Leon was having his way before he got the poke or whatever, but. Um, that fight, it, it stopped too early to, to even figure out how that fight was mm-hmm. even going to play out. So I don't think a lot of people can put too much credit in how that last fight. Um, and Bilal's 
he's been chomping at the bit for this man. Uh, he, I feel the fact that um, he waited so long to get that shot. For anybody to think that he didn't prepare as good as he possibly could for this shot, I mean, he's he's going to give everything out there. And I mean, um, and you saw. I don't know if you saw the. He came out. I know he talked with us, and I know I knew it came out with other ones. He was when he was talking to the radio guys. I'm not sure if that's the only interview it came out. They asked him if he had bumped in or saw Leon already on fight week, and he said about how they saw each other in a in a elevator. Right. But Leon was super quiet, wasn't saying anything, and that it was his teammate, and that he sensed fear in him and stuff. You know, like Bilal's just. I mean, he's so focused. He's not afraid of everything. I think he really wants to to seize this moment. But man, um, like you said, it's hard to go against what Leon's been able to do. Leon, but Leon's, he's got a chance. He has a real chance. Yeah. And I think anybody that thinks that, that he doesn't have a chance is wrong. Leon's the better natural athlete. There's no question about it. I mean, Leon is a gifted athlete, but Bilal is, he's got that grit. He's got that yep. grind. Um, he's mentally strong, and he is—he is—he he does have a chip on his shoulder. And I understand too. To be honest with you, when Bilal he's, explains it, it's totally right. Like, bro, you know, we had a fight. You poked me in the eye. Yep. And then I—I I want a rematch, and you're like, no. No. And 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 he's so right because like Leon was the guy that everybody overlooked that nobody yep. really talked about, right? Yep. And then Leon got to the top, and and so it's like, well, why are you overlooking me? Like, what you were that guy, and now I'm like, what are you doing? So I get the and yep. that's that like from Bilal's perspective, like. That's not, you know, the the elevator story may be a little bit of a uh, manufactured. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, that's that that part of it is not manufactured. Being like, bro, you poked me in the eye. Yep. Why am I not getting a rematch with you? You know what I mean? It's like, and they even said they asked me like, say you win the belt, do you give Leon a shot? And he's like, who's he beat that he deserves a rematch? <laughs> it's so crazy. So crazy. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be what's what's awesome about this. I mean, we got two title fights on this that are gonna be incredibly fun to watch mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm i'm gonna be at the as much as i say yes i picked leon i still can easily have been swayed to go below yep. it's funny i was he did an interview so the interview you do with junkie did in his car uh he was doing it in the car and so it was real dark and it was like shaky and i remember i was upset that he <laughs> chose to do it so i was like i'm glad i picked leon <laughs> even though it's the most silly that's the way it's the most that's silly the reason you get, yeah that's how i that's how oh. i pick him like did you give us a good interview or did you Treat us like garbage. That's now I'm amazing. not going to pick you. That's hilarious. Uh, Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades. Ooh, I, I got to think a lot of people – I mean, I got to think most everybody's going to Aspinall. But this yep. is another one, too, where I'm like, if you're yep. writing off Curtis Blades, yep. like, first of all, we know Curtis Blades, like, it's incredibly skilled, incredibly talented, evolving, getting better. Yep. And it's weird because that first fight was so short that you can't take much out of it. But I will say, it didn't look like Curtis was intimidated by being in there with Aspinall. You know what I mean? Like yep. he was, he was moving a little bit. So um, I don't know. I, I, I would take Aspinall here. I'm, I'm assuming you did the same. I did take Aspinall, but I mean, I mean, Curtis, he's so strong. I mean, he's such good size. Uh, I mean, he's dangerous. He's a strong, powerful dude. But man, we haven't seen anybody be able to. I mean, we thought uh, Sergey was gonna have his way, and, and Tom made him look silly. Bro, that was. You know, I was just. I can't doubt the kid now. You know, so that was um, that was scenes he's, right there. Yeah, bro. he's that just he's just a different different type of heavyweight man. He's so quick and he's got a lot of power. He's got good durability, but he he's he's smart. He fights smart. So I mean that bodes well for him. But yeah, I mean I'll he's be excited so to watch He's it. so marketable too, oh, dude. Not 100%. not and not just within England. You know what I mean? Yep. Not just like oh he's got ties to England. Like bro, that dude's like yep. looks the part, talks the part. Like he's so sharp on the mic. Like uh, that dude is so marketable, man. If he yep. can, boy, if he can win this and and uh, man, if he can get John Jones. I mean, I still gotta have Stipe happen. Stipe could upset and ruin everything, but. I, I, I want to see it. I think it'd be amazing. As much as I love Steve, that's not going to happen. I know. I, I feel like that's what everybody's like. Everybody, I feel like everybody you talk to is like, look, man, I ain't trying to disrespect Steve because yeah. like I love me some Steve. <laughs> but boy, but, but I, I will eat, I will eat crow if Steve goes out there and starches him. But it's imagine, not going to happen. Can you imagine, <laughs> dude? That would be bonkers. Steve comes off four years away to starch but John even Jones. Then, like, do you envision them saying like? He's going to do the Amanda Nunes. I mean, he's going to literally gonna turn right back around and lay it down and say, you know, I, I, I got that last one in that I wanted. This was years in the making. Uh, I can't, I can't do that again, you know. So, but yeah, we won't, we won't see that. Mm. We won't see that happen. No, that'd be the end of it. I would just be glad to see that fight happen at this point. King Green, Patty Pimblett. 
<sighs> so tough one too, right? I know. I did. I, I unfortunately went with the uh, the pimblet. I, just, I yeah. gave him the locale, but I, I don't feel good about it. I mean, I, I, just because I love Bobby Green. Love or, Bobby. King I, Green. King Green. Um, but, man, um, Patty is very sure of himself. He likes to talk a lot of shit, you know, and there's a part of me that wants to see King Green give it to him and knock his ass out. But I've I've picked that way before, and I've lost. And I think it's Patty's a he's the smarter play, and I just went with I just think he has more ways to win than Bobby's. I think he can stay away from Bobby's power, and I think he can not get uh, pulled into that fight that Bobby wants to make it happen. And I think that's what's going to happen. But um, I, I won't cry. If, if if Green gets the win, yeah, I it's it's a, t- it's, and a t- I, it's not like I don't like Patty. It just no. there's, the, he, there's times where he's so boisterous that you just want to see somebody kind of put into him, and th- and that's maybe more so now just because it's Green. It's 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 tough because I like I like Patty, right? I like I like uh, yeah, so do I. You know what I mean? Like obviously the personality, like I mean he's so boisterous, and but he enjoys. You know he's putting on a show, right? Like he's he's bringing that he's bringing that upon himself, right? Yep. Um, and and everybody loves the accent and the spirit and all those things. It's great. But man, we've been watching Green for so long, dude, yeah. and he's he's obviously become a fan favorite. He was kind of like the the hardcore fan favorite for a long time, but I feel like more and more people are getting to see his story. And and he's a tough matchup, right? Because if uh, if Patty thinks he wants to strike, I mean, King has got some. I mean, we know how great his boxing is, right? The defensive boxing, the 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 shoulder rolls, the the Philly shell. I mean, it's great. Um, and then grappling, I think he's got great defensive wrestling as well. So it's a challenge. So I'm man. Just very, very competitive matchups. Then uh, Arnold Allen, Kiga Chikadze, incredibly, incredibly competitive as well. Arnold Allen coming off a couple of losses, but still an incredibly talented dude. And, and Giga's had some trouble staying busy as well. So yeah, and that that's, that's a tough one because I that one I'm on the fence. I did go Giga, but I'm kind of that's one I'm sort of doubting myself. On it's that gonna one. be a big. Arnold has the ability, but he's he's come up short. He's come up short against two very, very talented athletes his last two times yeah. out. So I, I guess I I probably lean more on the size difference on that one that I thought if Giga can kind of keep it keep it at bay and use his reach a little bit but you never know Alan's a dog man uh, dude's tough as nails man I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls it out I love that it. one's that one's gonna be a, a, a that one's gonna be a battle of who's a, a battle what's a battle of attrition yep on that one uh, I did want to give a shout out to a, a late addition to the card Jake Hadley who jumped on there against Kyle and Lara and I think that's gonna be a great fight between two Dogs, those dudes are gonna go out and scrap. Like those dudes like to throw down. So yeah. I'm excited for that. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, listen, it's I gonna be a good night. It's, it's gonna, gonna be good. It's gonna be a good card. Uh, sorry for everybody in Europe that has to stay up late. We will <laughs> no. be enjoying it in the Pacific time zone, which is the absolute best time zone in the world for live sports. Well, you uh, won't be. No, I'll be back. I'll fly back. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll fly back. So I've got. A, I've got. Um, I'm taking the red eye tonight. We got weigh-ins tomorrow. Uh, CFSC 133 Friday night. Watley versus Forrest. A historic title unification bout in the main event. It's the first time in CFSC history we've ever had a champ and an interim champ face off with each other for the unified title. Because normally what happens is we'll have a champ. And we'll, you know, if the champ is maybe waiting to get signed or is out or whatever, like we'll we'll crown an interim title holder. But generally, the champ gets signed. I mean, they end up going somewhere. Robert Wiley has not gotten that uh, opportunity yet, so he's going to go put his belt on the line against Marquez Forrest, the undefeated uh, former Next Gen champ as well. So a uh, a fantastic main event, and um, yeah, tune into it Friday night, CFSC 133, and then what time's my flight leave? I got a 7:38 a.m. out of Tampa. On Saturday morning, got a quick stop in Charlotte, and then on to Las Vegas. I'll be home at 1.06 p.m. I will head straight to the house, and then 3.15 p.m., the USC kicks off. So, Ooh, fingers crossed all that uh, airport stuff is working. Oh, well, I, mean, I, I mean, if you've been paying attention, obviously airports have been running so smoothly <laughs> over the last couple of days that yeah. – uh, Should that be was, no problem. Should did, be no problem. I don't, did that make – now, I mean, I don't know if that made world news. It, it, oh yeah, yeah, about the the crowd strike shutdown oh, or whatever. Oh yeah, it just was huge. Like, it was huge news because it was such a big thing that it affected people. I don't know if it if in terms of airlines, but in terms of like it making uh, national news and international news. That's I crazy, sure. right? It just goes to show you like how reliant our society is on technology at this point, dude. Like, I was shocked at what. First of all, I was shocked that it wasn't a cyber attack. They say it wasn't. Yeah. I guess I believe them, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it just goes to show you how reliant we are on technology. That stuff can get shut down in a second, man. That was crazy. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. So, all right. 
Busy MMA weekend. Appreciate you guys uh, spending some time with us. Uh, I will have a and a half episode over at patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. Uh, take a look out for the Danny Barlow uh, left hand to God interview as well. That's a cool thing. I know. It's, a, I love, it's <laughs> one of the cool, best things cool ever, dude. Um, and uh, I, I did have his new opponent in there as well. So I, uh, he, he wouldn't necessarily – I had his new opponent's name, but he didn't know I had his new opponent's name. And I think he was like, I'm not supposed to say that. So uh, not, yeah, he was like, well, I, uh, I don't know. I can't be talking about that. I'm like, okay, all right. So, But it is. So if you want to listen to that interview, you'll find out who he's fighting next. And it should be a fun one. That's fine. Uh, anyway, yeah, sorry I'm late. Nobody else knows. Just cold coffee. My apologies, <laughs> cold coffee. The rest of you, hope you enjoy this on time. Always appreciate you guys supporting us over at patreon.com slash Jamie Road Show. And even if you can't do that, we just appreciate you spending some time with us. Hopefully you enjoy hearing from us each and every week. We enjoy doing it. Thanks for listening.